which we have heard, which we have seen, and our hands have handled concerning the word of the life. John 1.1 1, 1. Welcome, boys and girls, once again to our program of Walking Through the Word, and I'm just so glad that you can be with us today. And the title for our program today is Killing or Adoring. But before we start, let's say a word of prayer. Dear Father, we're just so thankful that you love us so much and that you have provided a plan of salvation. And this is what we're going to study about today. And Lord, I just pray that you will open our minds so that we can really understand the great sacrifice of Jesus on our behalf. And we're just so thankful that you've done that for us. And in this moment, we just want to tell you that we accept this beautiful sacrifice. So please bless us now on this program and thank you for answering our prayers. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Okay. As we walk through the Word today, let's remember that God created the most beautiful, perfect world. But unfortunately, we have a terrible enemy. And Lada, I'd like for you to read Revelation 12, 9. And the great dragon was cast out, that old serpent called the devil and Satan, which deceiveth the whole earth. And he was cast out into the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. And you know what? God warned Adam and Eve that there was an enemy. And he told them so specifically, stay away from that tree in the middle of the garden. But you know what? They disregarded that, didn't they? And as we read this story, we see how very, very important it is to follow God's commands. And unfortunately, the serpent did deceive Eve and it brought in sin. And uh, I'm just so thankful that God didn't just walk away from us. He just kept pursuing us. And I wonder, Sarita, would you read for us Hebrews 13, verse 5? For he had said, I will never leave thee nor forsake thee. Isn't that a beautiful promise? God says, I will never leave you nor forsake you. Well, Andrew, would you please read Genesis 3, 7, because we're going to find out what happened after sin came into the garden. Then the eyes of both of them were opened, and they knew that they were naked, and they saw fig leaves, and they sewed fig leaves together and made themselves covering. <gasps> you know that beautiful robe that was covering them disappeared when they sinned. Isn't that sad? Yes. And all of a sudden they were like, oh, what's going on here? I feel kind of cold and oh my. And they were probably kind of embarrassed, weren't they? Oh, what can we do? And they just went out and the Bible says they got fig leaves and sewed it together. But can you imagine <laughs> trying to sew fig leaves together? Do you think it made very good robe? <laughs> I don't think so. And uh, they used that as an excuse. After that, they, they were hiding in the garden. And it seems that God came to visit them every day in the cool of the evening, the Bible says. And he was like, Adam, Eve, where are you? Well, I know God knew where they were. But they were there hiding and they were scared to death and trembling. And when God saw them, he said, oh my, did you eat from the tree? Yes. But again, I'm just so thankful that, that God is just so merciful to us and so good. And uh, Johan, can you read for us Genesis 3, 21? It says, Unto Adam also and to his wife did the Lord God make coats of skins and clothe them. You know, when I was preparing for this, 
it just made me so sad to think of how Adam and Eve must have felt when God took an innocent little animal yes. and killed that little animal so that he could make them some clothes to wear. Can you imagine how terrible they felt? To think that that little animal, it hadn't done anything wrong, but now it was dead. He would never run around anymore, be a companion to them anymore. But God was trying to teach them some really important lessons. And we are going to learn more about that today. We have a very special guest. It's Pastor Mark Chambers, and he's going to explain a little bit more about the sacrificial system and the great plan of salvation. And my prayer is that each of us can really be grateful to God for what he has done for us. We're so glad that you are able to be with us today from your homes. We're pleased to spend some time studying God's Word together. And we're going to be looking today at the sacrificial system, killing or adoring. You know, in the Bible, in the book of Leviticus, which we're going to be looking at today, the lot is said about offerings. There are different types of offerings. Um, there's the burnt offering. What other offering do you know, no, Johan? Peace offering. There's a peace offering, and Sarah? Thanksgiving offering. A thanks, thanks offering. Trespass offering. There's a trespass offering. Can you think of a, an offering? There's mm, a... I know, other than the ones that you guys already said. Yes. Well, there are so many different types of offerings. There's the grain offering or the uh, meat offering. Live it because there are so many offerings. But in many of these offerings, there was a need for sacrifice or for a lamb or an animal to be killed. We're going to look at that. Why was this there so much killing? Was this killing or adoring? That's our focus this, this, in, the, in this presentation. Killing or adoring. In Leviticus chapter 1, we, are, we read about the burnt offering. Uh, Johan, would you like to read for us Leviticus chapter 1 and verse 1 to 4? It says, And the Lord called unto Moses and spake unto him out of the tabernacle of the congregation, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel, and say unto them, If any man of you bring an offering unto the Lord, ye shall bring your offering of the, of the cattle, even of the herd, and of the flock. If his offering be a burnt sacrifice of the herd, let him offer a male without blemish. He shall offer it of his own voluntary will, at the door of the tabernacle of the congregation before the Lord. And he shall put his hand upon the head of the burnt offering, and it shall be accepted to him to make atonement for him. Okay. Thank you, Johan. Sarah, would you like to read verses 5 to verse 9? And he shall kill the bullock before the Lord and the priest. Aaron's sons shall bring the blood and sprinkle the blood around round about upon the altar that is by the door of the tabernacle of the congregation. And he shall flay the burnt offering and cut it into his pieces. And the sons of Aaron, the priest, shall put fire upon the altar and lay the wood in order upon the fire. And the priest, Aaron's sons, shall lay the parts, the, the parts, the head, and the fat, in order upon the wood that is on the fire which is upon the altar. But his inwards are his legs, shall he wash in water. And the priest shall burn all on the altar, to be a burnt sacrifice and offering made by fire, 
of a sweet savior unto the Lord. Thank you. So here we have an offering presented. It was a burnt sacrifice. And this offering was to be presented by whom? By Jesus. By, by the sinner. By someone who wanted to have their sins pardoned. So in verse <coughs> In verse 2, it says, If any man of you bring an offering unto the Lord, ye shall bring your offering of the cattle, even of the herd. In verse 3, it says, He shall offer it of his own voluntary will at the door of the tabernacle of the congregation. So, there's something very important about the offering or the sacrifice. It was to be offered by free will. It was to be offered by those who recognized that they were guilty before God. Somebody who knew that they had sinned was the one to offer the sacrifice. God was not forcing, was, going, was not going to force anyone to make a confession. In the offering, we notice it was supposed to be a free will offering. That is, the sinner could choose to offer this offering or not. Why would he bring the offering? Andrew? Because he needs to recognize for him to show that he recognizes his sin. Ah, yes. It was a symbol of confession. His bringing the offering would be showing his con or his sorrow or his regret for having sinned. And so he would bring this offering of his own free will. If someone, choosed, if someone chose not to bring an offering, what would happen to that person? He would die with his sin. Okay, that person would remain with his sin, sin or with his guilt. So that the way to for that God has made, has made provision for the removing of guilt is through an offering, through the system of sacrifice. Now, another thing that we, look, we, we find in this passage is that this burnt offering, the person who brought the, the offering, the offering could be a bull, depending on how wealthy or how poor the person was. If it was a wealthy person, then he would be required to, to bring a bull, or if it was a, a priest or somebody of high of office in the, in, in the kingdom, he would be required to bring a bull. If it was a, a, a middle-class person, a, re, a regular person, then they would be required to bring a sheep or a goat. Or if it was a very poor person, then they would be required to bring what? Uh, a turtle dove or uh, a pigeon. Turtle dove or a pigeon, right. Now, the, the offering would be prepared and it would be burnt. And this would go up as a sweet savor to God, right? One of the other conditions for the offering is that the offerings should be without defect. They should, they should not have any defect, any physical defect. They should be healthy animals. Only healthy animals were accepted. This is very important because all of the animals that were used in the service, they had symbol, symbolism. They were pointing to something very important, a very spiritual lesson. So this instruction needed to be followed. Now, in verse 4, <coughs> in verse 4, Laura, would you like to read that? In Leviticus 1 and verse 4. In verse 4. Leviticus 1, verse 4. One verse four. Yes. And he shall put his hand upon the head of the burnt offering, and it shall be accept 
accepted for him to make atonement for him. Okay, so when the offering is brought, what does the sinner do? He puts his, his hands his hand on the head. He puts his hands on the head, on the head of, the, of, of the offering, right? And what is that symbolizing? It's, I believe it's passing the sins upon the animal. Okay, yes. This is done for, to make atonement. It's a, it's, a symbolize, it's, it's a symbol of passing the guilt from the person to the animal. So that God is not going, now going to look at the sinner, at that person, that man, as the one bearing the sin or bearing the guilt. He's going to now look at the animal that he has passed the guilt to as guilty. And what is going to happen to the guilty? In Romans chapter 6 and verse 23, the Bible tells us that the wages of sin is death. death. So anyone who is <coughs> guilty of sin is guilty of death, has a debt of death. Owed, owing before God. So now, because he has passed his guilt onto the, the animal, the animal will have to die. And it says this is to make an atonement for the person. The word that's used, that's translated atonement in the Hebrew is kafir, which means to cover. So by passing on the sin, he is now covered. His sin is covered. God no longer sees his sin on him, but he sees a sin on the lamb. And so now the lamb is going to have to pay the price for his sin. And you know what he does? He takes a knife and he cuts the throat. Who kills a lamb? The sinner. The sinner. The sinner. Now this is a very important thing because it points us to what? Jesus has done for us. We, all of us, have sinned. Romans 3 verse 23 says, All have sinned and come short of the glory of God. So all of us have guilt before God. But the only way we can be freed from our guilt is to lay our sins upon another. And you know who does the animal, the lamb, the bulls, the goats, and the pigeons point to? To Jesus. It points to Jesus. Laura, would you like to read us? Read for us John chapter 1, verse 29. And the next day John seeth Jesus coming unto him and saith, Behold the Lamb of God, which taketh away the sin of the world. Thank you. So children do you see what Jesus has done for us he didn't have any sin of himself he was innocent but he became like that lamb like that bullock and he took our sin that's why John says he is a lamb of God which takes away the sin of the world he takes the sin so that anyone who confesses their sin will not have to be condemned before God. So I hope that each one of us, each one of you, will think about what sin, what guilt you may have and make confession to God through Christ.